Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? Hope it's fantastic. Everything here, it's fine. It's raining. It's fine. Um, it's raining a lot. We were under flood watch. We were under tornado warnings. Tornado watch, not warnings earlier. Very, very strange. Uh, um, anyway, so last week uh, we had softball. Um, we're supposed to have softball this week, but so far everything's been canceled, and I feel like we probably won't have any games this week at all, thanks to this rain. But we'll see. We are supposed to have a home game tomorrow. Who knows? Last week we had softball, and I worked the gate taking money, uh, which is, you know, uh, as a parent, it's something we, we try to get every family involved some way. So I, the fact that I live right here, like we play at the park that I live by, I just walk down there and stand at the table. No big deal. I missed the first two innings of the game. But I, not really. I can kind of see it. So whatever. Take money. Um, so I get down there. I get to my station. And then I hear, hey, neighbor. And I look over. And my next door neighbor, literally, she lives at the end of my driveway, um, is walking up. And she's got a money bag and a sign. Uh, because the boys baseball team was also playing that night and her son plays and she was taking ticket money so it ended up very interesting that two neighbors uh ended up working the gate together taking money anyway as part of that we had this conversation that made me really wince not wince that, that's not fair but whatever it made me think and her conversation was she told somebody who came in they could park in her driveway if they wanted because there was like basically no parking left. She's like, yeah, you can just park in my driveway and walk through the yard. Now, here's the thing. Behind us, so she lives here. Behind us there is a man who uh, was very upset when this development went in. Because this land was previously just scrub, like brush land. And he feeds deer. And I mean, he basically had his own little wilderness retreat out here for a very long time. Um, on the other side of him, a bunch of townhouses went in probably 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. That was upsetting to him. And then when this development went in, he was really like, now he got boxed in. You know, he, he had this nice little thing, but he couldn't afford this land or whatever. So, sorry, you know, whatever. Anyway, he's upset about it. He has been the entire time I've lived here. <laughs> so, and his property is, it's probably an acre or more, but it's long. It's like, it's like a regular suburban house width, but like three or four lots deep. So it goes behind all of our houses. And she walks across his yard to get to the park. And I was like, ooh. As a grown man, the idea of walking through somebody else's yard, no, just no. Like that's, no. And I don't know why. When, when does that, so at some point, there was a transition where that became not okay. You know, as a child, as a, maybe even a young teenager, I played in all of my neighbor's yards. I walked through all of them. I did whatever I wanted in my neighborhood. My parents lived in a suburban area. I live in a suburban area. I walked through everybody's yards. I ran through their yards. We played hide and seek and BB gun fights and all kinds of stuff. And it didn't matter whose yard. It didn't matter. People I knew and people I didn't know. It wasn't a big deal. But the thought of like walking through somebody's yard now as a grown man, oh, that makes me feel weird. And just, you know, if somebody was walking through my yard, I'd be like, what are you doing in my yard? Like what? I, I walk every day. I haven't been the last two days because of the rain, but whatever. I walk every day. I walk out of here. I go down the road. I go past the park. I turn around. I come back. I go around. You know, I walk about a mile-ish, a little more than a mile uh, down around my development I feel weird when I have to step off the road for a car. Our road out of here is like barely one and a half car widths. So there's not, you know, it's walking in the road is you, 
run a risk. <laughs> With some of the people that live that way, you run a risk, right? So I, I feel weird stepping off into somebody's driveway or their yard or whatever to let a car go past. Like that makes me feel kind of, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm stepping in your yard or whatever. So the idea of walking as a walking through somebody's yard, just whoa, that's whoa. But again, so the point, like what the question is, like at what point is that become weird? You know, obviously if this was a townhouse or an apartment complex where there's just a shared yard, that's not a problem. We have a shared area at the lower part of our development. That's not, I have no problem walking through that. But walking through somebody's yard, that feels weird to me. And I, and I don't know, I can't, I mean, I guess if I went back to like my teenage years, I could probably say somewhere, you know, between 13 and 15 is when I started to really be conscious of like, I shouldn't, probably shouldn't be in this person's yard. But prior to that, did not care at all. And maybe it's not just an age thing. Maybe it's a time thing. Maybe, you know, I was 13 and 92. Like, so maybe it was just pre-internet era. Like, like there was less, uh, I think people were less afraid then. Like, you know, the, the, maybe the, the fact that disaster news is 24 seven now means that everybody thinks that disaster is constantly happening. And that, you know, everybody who is, goes outside is a potential killer or whatever. Uh, maybe that maybe the 24-hour news cycle and the immediacy of information has made everybody a little bit more paranoid. That might be part of it as well. But I also feel like I, my dad didn't walk through people's yards when I was a kid. That just wasn't something that you do as a grown person. If you're a grown person walking through somebody's yard, like in my parents' neighborhood... If that were to happen, when they have a fence, but whatever. If that were to happen, we would assume that the person is on drugs or is drunk or is a college student trying to steal stuff for a, a jump-in ceremony or whatever. A rush. That's not... Jump-in is something completely different. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What about... Like, where... I don't... And, of course, I don't live in a city environment where kind of everything is everybody's. That's not a thing. Um... I live in a suburban environment. I'm not super rural either, where, you know, at the same time, super rural is usually like, I know my neighbors very well. My neighbors are like, hey, you can hunt on my land or whatever. I don't live that, like that either. Uh, but I wouldn't walk through anybody's yard. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know sounds smart as untenable. It's an adjective meaning not possible to defend as an argument or position. Are the legitimate compensation and honors that should come as the result of ability and merit to be denied on the untenable ground of sex aristocracy? Bertha Honor Potter Palmer, an American socialite. Untenable, U-N-T-E-N-A-B-L-E. -E. I thought untenable was also just like not maintainable. Like... I guess maybe I'm thinking like financially, like things can become, uh, you know, a, a, a business can be untenable if it's not making a profit. Is that wrong?